since we're talking about vigorous intensity and adding more of a, a, a stressor and a more stronger stimulus, um, maybe you can recap some of what Dr. Levine, Dr. Kabbalah talked about on the podcast when they were sort of defining the various training zones and what these zones are, because there is a lot of information out there on that, which is can be quite confusing to people. It can be. And some people will like to use zones for training. I think it's common in sort of the exercise with, you know, coaches who are coaching endurance athletes to use this five zone model. If people, you know, are familiar with listening to podcasts on fitness, they'll probably hear people reference five zones. There are obviously other zones to use. But yeah, Dr. Levine defined these sort of five training zones. And kind of before I go and define what these are and how people can use them to guide their training, I think it's he kind of defined them using three different metrics and that we're going to use to define each of the zones. But lactate levels are one way to do it, but we're not really going to discuss that because in reality, you know, most people are not going to be measuring their lactate levels weekly, monthly, or even, you know, certainly not daily during exercise. And so it's kind of a moot point to say, you know, zone two exercises, this lactate level, most people don't really know what that is. And so there are other ways to measure intensities and use these zones. One way is just your rating of perceived exertion or RPE. Um, and this is just a subjective measure of how hard you think you're exercising. And uh, this is typically on a 6 to 20 scale. Now, that might seem kind of weird for people, like, oh, why is it not 1 to 10? 1 to 10 is kind of typical. What people use, like, uh, how hard is this scale? But it's called the Borg RPE scale. And the 6 to 20 is essentially because the um, initially the theory behind that scale was that you were just at a 0 to whatever your RPE was, and that would correspond to your heart rate. So say average person has a maximum heart rate of around 200. If I give you an RPE of 18, that means my heart rate's probably around 180, which is a fairly high intensity. Whereas maybe my RPE right now is a six, maybe my heart rate's 60. That's like a resting heart rate. So that's kind of the idea behind that scale. So people kind of can understand what, what, what that means and why we're doing six to 20 versus one to 10. Another way is to use the talk test. And that's essentially just like, are you able to do a full conversation, barely get out words or not talk at all? That's kind of another way to, to kind of gauge zones. And the final way to describe the zone is to be um, based on your percentage of your maximal heart rate. And a lot of people have heart rate monitors, so they're going to be able to measure their heart rate during exercise. So we're going to define zones using all three of those kind of metrics. So if we look at zone one, this is going to be a recovery intensity. This is pretty much easy as you can go. It's not resting, but it's very, very light activity. So on the RPE scale, this is going to be anywhere from a six to an eight. Um, it's going to be about 50 to 60% of your maximal heart rate. And if you're going to use the talk test to measure that intensity, it would be you could hold a full conversation. So what you and I are doing right now, Rhonda, just talking, having a podcast, you could basically do that if you were in zone one or recovery intensity because you're going on an easy walk or um, something like that. Zone two intensity, people will hear about zone two training all the time. This is still kind of a low, a light to a moderate intensity exercise. So um, it's going to correspond to an RPE of about nine to 12, 60 to 70 percent of your maximal heart rate. And then the talk test, again, you should be able to have a conversation in zone two. If someone were listening to you, they could probably tell you were exercising. But in general, you could hold pretty much a, a full conversation. And so these, you know, zone one and zone two, those are going to be your light to moderate intensity exercises. Um, in particular, you know, that zone two training good for kind of building uh, your aerobic base. Then there's zone three. This is kind of veering into the territory of high intensity interval training. Um, it's thought of a lot as your threshold intensity or maybe steady state exercise. It's going to correspond to an RPE of 13 to 15, about 70 to 80 percent of your maximal heart rate. And then this is where talking gets a little bit difficult. So you could speak in broken sentences. So it's still not, you're not gasping for air yet, but you could speak in broken sentences and that would be a good way to indicate kind of this zone during uh, using the talk test. And then zone four, this is where you get into the high intensity training. Um, so it's a 16 to 18 RPE. It's, um, you know, 80 to 95% of your maximal heart rate. And you could probably only speak one word or two at a time, maybe if you were trying to gauge that zone based on the talk test. And then zone five, that's maximal exercise intensity. That's your VO2 max. It's as hard as you can go. So RPE 19 or 20, it's 95 plus percent of your maximal heart rate. And then you shouldn't be able to talk. So if you're doing, uh, you know, Tabata intervals or something like that, this is zone five. You shouldn't be able to talk at all during that exercise intensity. So those are the five zones. And I think what's 
cool about having all these different metrics to define the zones is that, you know, if people don't really want to train using heart rate, or maybe they don't even have a heart rate monitor, they can use the talk test, they can use RPE, or maybe a combination of all three of these. And they're pretty reliable. I mean, they've all of these have been kind of well evidenced to correspond to the different zones. But I think what's nice is that people can use these to train and it doesn't require a lot of technical ability, a lot of experience. Um, and so this is, I think, you know, in my mind, the best way that people can think about kind of training intensities is using the zones as we define them here, or at least using those as a guide. I, I really like the talk test way of defining it because I, as you were sitting here talking about this, I was thinking about my my whole exercise protocol and I'm like, okay, oh yeah, that's actually what I thought was more zone two is really more zone three, what I'm doing here. With respect to heart rate monitors, do you, I, I know Levine mentioned there can be a lot of error with using something like a smartwatch. And is there more accuracy in using something like a chest strap, like a maybe a polar strap versus a smartwatch versus like the talk test? So let's say you don't have a chest strap. Should you be using a talk test or can you still use your smartwatch? Is it still, what's more accurate? Yeah, I think the accuracy of the smartwatches is is obviously there. They've been, you know, validated against EKG and things like that. But as Levine mentioned, and as others have kind of drawn caution, they tend to get less accurate as the intensity of exercise increases. They're not perfect because, you know, it's getting your heart rate reading from a sensor on your wrist um, versus your chest. So I would encourage everybody to invest in a heart rate chest, you know, a chest strap monitor. It's less than a hundred dollar investment. It's going to give you a lot more accurate data. Some people find them uncomfortable, but most of them now are, are pretty comfortable. And if you really want to train using heart rate, I would say invest, invest in the chest strap. But you know, the or the watches aren't totally off and they can be used as a good kind of reference as to as to where you are. But like I said, in my experience and I think the experience of others. The harder that you go, the higher the intensity goes, kind of the less accurate that they get. So if you want to use heart rate, great. It can be a good indicator. But the talk test is a very good, I think, way to assess your exercise intensity, especially for people who are newer. So I think one of the, not flaws with RPE, but one of the caveats is that you need a little bit of experience to really know where you're at, like how hard something is. I mean, if somebody has never actually gone to a maximal intensity, then how do you know how do you know what a 20 out of 20 is if you've never really reached the point of volitional exhaustion? So if somebody is just beginning to exercise, they might be at 70% of their maximal intensity, but they might think that they're at a 20. So it takes time to learn kind of what your RPE is to be able to assess that accurately. So I would say, you know, if people are more experienced with exercise, then you could use something like RPE to kind of gauge your intensity. But those newer to exercise might actually have a lot of good feedback with the talk test. I even kind of use that. I mean, you know, it's if you're running with a group of people and you can have a conversation, okay, well, we're probably in zone two. If I'm really struggling to like breathe, then I might be in zone three, four, or even five. So um, I think it's a great way to use the talk test. Anybody can use it, but I think newer people might benefit more from that. And I think also what people can think about doing is using a combination of all three. You know, you can use heart rate, you can use RPE, you can use the talk test, and maybe see if those, you know, correlate with one another during exercise, but use all of those to kind of inform your exercise intensity. Exactly. I, I usually am not wearing, I do have a chest strap. I have a Polish chest strap. I have used it before, but I'm not typically wearing it when I'm doing a workout. And so I I think using my my smart my apple watch along with the talk test because i often have someone with me when i'm working out is like okay well maybe maybe it's not entirely accurate as i'm getting into my zone three perhaps zone four but i know i can't talk more than a word so it's clearly like it's good to combine them both 